Well, I got some quail coming out of the brooder box and I need a new grow out pin, so I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna build that in today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Rednecked video. Again, my name is Chris. If you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, your deck, your garage, or heck, even a spare room in your house if that's the way you want to do it. Today we're building a grow out pin for the quail, and uh, I thought I had some requests to uh, take you guys along for this and show you how I build it. I've done some hutch builds in the past and shot videos on those, but I figured why not just shoot this one? It's going to be a little bit different than the last one I built, so uh, I figured I'd just take you guys along. I've already got quite a bit done here. Let me take you in and show you kind of what I've done. All right, so the first thing I've done is I built two of these kind of boxes. This is going to be the uh, top of the hutch and this will be the bottom of the hutch and then they're going to be standing up on legs. And these are pretty simple. I just used uh, one by four furring strips. Cheap lumber. I think they were two dollars a piece or something like that. It's eight foot long so I didn't have to cut this side. And then I measured 36 inches wide. Cut off uh, that at 36 inches because that's the standard on a roll of hardware cloth to wrap this with. So I won't have to do a lot of cutting on the hardware cloth. And uh, the only thing that's important to remember is that uh, when I screwed these on, just make sure it's 36 inches. If you were to put these boards on the outside, then you're gonna have to cut your boards a little bit shorter, like two inches shorter, because you'll have two more inches of, you know, an inch on this side, an inch of that side where these boards are on the outside. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. But just make sure you got. 36 inches across, and that's really all there is to this. Pretty simple, um, just screwed it together, pre-drill your holes so you don't split the wood out, and uh, that's really about all there is to this. Let me show you the legs I've got built. All right, I'm not completely in camera, but that's okay. These are the legs. I've got two so far for the back, two for the front. I'm gonna have to be doing some additional um, you know, legs, but these are just gonna get it started anyway. What I did is I, I cut these off uh, six foot for the front and then three inches shorter for the back. So that's uh, what, 69 inches for the back. So, um, and then I measured from the bottom of the, the leg up three feet. That's gonna be the bottom of my hutch. And I just wrote on there B for back. Um, that way I know this is the top of the hutch and these are the back legs and I don't get them mixed up. Same thing with the other two. The other two are the front legs. So I wrote on there front, measured up 36 inches, drew a line. That's where the bottom of my hutch is going to sit. So now I've got to get the uh, base at least uh, mounted onto these legs. All right, so to mount these legs on there, I've just kind of laid it down and um, I've got this one side lined up pretty good. So I'm going to line it up, make sure it's straight make sure it's lined up pretty well and then just screw it down and then I'll go do the other side. What I'm using for this uh, to put this part together are a 1 and 5 8 inch uh, decking screw. Plenty big enough. Now what I used on the uh, the sides here to screw this together right here those were smaller screws those were one and a quarter inch i didn't need that big of a screw and again you're going to need to pre-drill these because these will split out if you don't don't have to worry about it whenever i'm screwing this together and i'm just going to put uh, three screws in here just to make sure it's good and sturdy all right so i got the front legs on so now i gotta work on getting the back legs on this is a little bit tricky first one because this thing wants to wobble around on me but that'll be all right Alright, so I got the legs on, at least the front and the back legs. This is the front not facing me, the back's back there, they're a couple inches shorter. I put a three inch drop in it, like I said, so the roof will slant three inches, water will run off just fine. Um, now I need to get uh, the next level on there, so I'm going to be going uh, 18 inches up from the bottom. So I'm just going to measure up 18 inches. Actually be a little bit taller than 18 inches because the uh, I'll put the base of it at 18 inches, so it'll be two inches. It'll be 20 inches tall. The roof will be 20 inches on top. Hopefully that makes sense. You'll, you'll get it whenever I get done. So, okay, so I got my lines drawn, and what I'm gonna do is just put a couple of clamps in here that'll give me something to kind of rest it on while I get um, the rest of it screwed together. Um, hopefully that kind of makes sense. You'll see what I'm talking about. I'm, like I said, easier if you got two people to do this, but I've only got one, so what I'll do is I'll stick these clamps on here, and then I'll be able to rest it on there screw one side in and work my way around. You'll see what I'm talking about. There we go. 
Now I don't have a clamp on this front board, so I just need to get it screwed in real quick. Uh, where's my screws and my screw gun? I'm gonna start off by just putting one screw in it, just enough to hold it in place. Then I'll go ahead and get the rest of them, one screw in each one, hold it all in place, come back and put the rest of the screws in. All right, so this is kind of the initial setup here. There's gonna be another leg that goes right here in the middle, keep it from sagging, sturdy it up just a little bit. It's pretty sturdy right now, but still, that's a long, that's eight foot across there. It's a long stretch without any additional support. So I'll put one more support right here, and then I'll probably have to put a couple of uh, upright posts to hold, help hold the rafters on. Um, but what I need to do before I do that is put hardware cloth on here so I'm not, uh, whenever I put that other leg on, it helps hold that hardware cloth on and I'm not wrapping around that leg with hardware cloth. And before I can put hardware cloth on it, I need to put a, a, a coat of paint on this. So I need to paint uh, this right here. I don't, I mean, I'm probably going to go ahead and paint the legs too that I've got on here. Don't have to, but why not since I'm going to be painting. I just need to get this painted so I can get hardware cloth on it and uh, get the other legs on. And of course the front's gonna have doors so it's not gonna be hardware cloth all the way across so really all I need to do is paint the back and uh, put, a, put some hardware cloth on the back. That's really all I need to get done. So uh, let me get that done. I don't know how much more I'll get done today but I'll just uh, keep coming back with the camera as I work on this thing and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so I got a little bit done, quite a bit done actually. Got it all painted. Went ahead and put on a piece of hardware cloth and then put the leg on um, on either side. I wanted to get the hardware cloth on before I put the leg on, kind of give it a little bit of extra stability, make sure it holds up pretty well. Um, so nothing really special about how I did that, just uh, mounted the leg over the top of it, got them all painted first. So now, uh, let's see, next step, let me find my pieces, there we go, is I've got a couple of pieces that are about, well, this long right here. <laughs> They're going to go on the inside here and fill this gap because when I put wood across there, I'll bring you in close so this will make more sense. There's going to be just a little bit of a gap in between here. Let me bring the camera in I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I got to bend down here so you can see me. <laughs> Hopefully this makes sense. This gap right here, when I put a piece of wood, this is going to be solid right here, just a solid piece of plywood. When I mount that there, there's going to be a gap in between here. Just a little bit of a gap. So I'm going to go ahead and mount a board right there and I just cut it to that size and that's just going to flush everything up. That'll help me out a little bit later with a couple other things I'm going to do anyway. So, you know, pretty easy to do. Just uh, pre-drill a couple of holes so I don't split my wood out. All right, so I got these two boards mounted on either side here. Not perfect, but hey, it's a quail hutch, not fine furniture, so it's going to work just fine. All right, it's time to build some doors, and what you can see I've done here is I've just cut these to size, cut them at 45 degree angles, and then just laid them out here, and I'm going to mount them together with these brackets, these uh, corner brackets here. So uh, let me uh, get my screws going. And I shouldn't have to pre-drill these. They should be fine. So what I'll do is I'll mount one side, and then I'll square it up, make sure it's all square, and mount the other. All right, now I'll go see if it fits. Good news, it fits. This is going to be the door that has screen over it, so I'm going to get some uh, hardware cloth and uh, cut it to size and go ahead and staple it down. So, have a door now. That's what it's going to look like. And uh, not perfect. Got some gaps here, but again, it'll work just fine for a quail hutch. Got to build one more door, and that one's going to be a solid piece on the back, so I'll have to cut a piece of plywood to mount on the back of that. So, uh, I've got to go get some more mounting hardware. So, that's probably going to be a project for tomorrow, but I'll come back on film. You guys won't know the difference. All right, so I'm making some progress. What I did is I built a frame for myself here. Let me bring you in close, and I'll kind of show you how this all worked. All right, hopefully you can see this. What, um, you know, this is the side of the hutch, and I went ahead and put a piece in here just to kind of give a gap, and that gives me a place to put my door frame on. And what I'm using is these one by two um, furring strips, pretty cheap, and um, I just marked it an inch in from the outside board, and then drilled a couple of holes, mounted it on there so it sticks an inch and a half out on the other side. That'll make sense here in a second when I go to mount the door. And I just put those all the way around. I didn't cut these quite long enough. I probably should have cut them a little longer, but again, it's a uh, it's a quail hutch, not fine furniture, so it'll be just fine. I'm not going to redo it just for that. So let me take you around the other side, and I'll show you mounting the door on. 
All right, so that gives me a, you know, a good surface here all the way around for the door to kind of sit up against because my door does not, I mean, it fits inside this gap and I wanted something for it to close against. I did learn a lesson on some of the other hutches I built. You don't want to make this door too big because when it rains and there's high humidity, it'll swell and wants to stick. So I made it a little bit smaller. So let me set it there, get my hinges together. And the one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to raise this door up just a little bit, stick a couple of shims in there just to hold it up while I get it mounted. That'll raise it up so it's not uh, sitting completely down. Kind of even that out. All right, and to mount these doors, I'm just using these, uh, these hinges here. Um, just small cabinet hinges is all they are, and they work out pretty well. So pretty simple to use. Just set this where you want it. Square it up a little bit. I'm going to pre-drill my holes real quick, and then I'll go back and mount the screws in. All right, and uh, now I have a door. I just got to put some barrel locks on it real quick. Let me grab those. You don't need to watch me put these on necessarily, but these are just going to go right here so that whenever I close it, I'll have a lock to kind of uh, show you how that works. You know, slide it up, open it up, slide it back down. So that's pretty easy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stick one of them on right now, and the other one I'll probably just wait and do that. I just, I'm not measuring any of the stuff. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. You know, you can measure it, be more precise if you wanted to. I don't really care. Um, so those are just going to go just like that. Um, I do like to put the barrel locks facing down instead of facing up because um, they'll kind of fall down into place naturally, whereas if I do them what I mean the other way is that they have a tendency to fall open instead of fall closed, if that makes sense. So I like to put them uh, where you're where it's facing down. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. All right, let me get this uh, mounted on. I've got to get some uh, plywood cut for the other side here to get uh, the closed in section going. I'll come back whenever that's ready to get mounted and whatnot and uh, show you that step next. All right, I'm getting finally getting close to uh, finishing this up. It's been so busy, I, I've just had to work on it bits and pieces. Had a little bit of a camera malfunction, so I didn't get some of this filmed, but I'll take you around and show you what I got done while it wasn't on video. Um, I did get the other door mounted. This is pretty simple. It's just uh, mounted the same way the other one did, so nothing really you needed to see on film, I guess, but just a piece of plywood over it, so it's mounted. It's ready to go. Let me bring you over here, the camera a little closer, and I'll show you what I've done inside the hutch. All right, so we're looking inside the hutch, and uh, what I've done is I've mounted two pieces. I've mounted this piece right here, which is going to be uh, this part over here on this side is going to be covered. So it's going to be out of the wind, out of the rain, and they can get in here whenever they want to. Um, I put a 2x4 right across here. It's uh, 33 inches, I think. What I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to wrap this with wire, and then I'm going to put a solid bottom in this side right here. And I'll show you that as we get going. And I just... You know, I had a piece that was 33 inches long, so I figured that was long enough. I don't need to cover the whole piece. This is going to be a sandbox area for them with a solid bottom on it. I'll show you that as we get going, but that's why this piece is 33 inches in, is because I already had a piece of wood cut that size, 36 inches wide by 33 inches. I didn't want to have to do any more cutting, so I just made it that size. That's why. Um, let me bring you on the other side. I'll show you how this thing mounts here real quick. All right, well, hopefully you can see me. This is kind of an awkward angle here, but what I wanted to show is I didn't go all the way to the top. There's about a two-inch gap right here at the top. I wanted to leave enough room for ventilation. I am going to put a piece of clear plastic over this from here on back to cover that side, but I wanted some airflow, so I left a little gap right here about two inches. So uh, that's why it's not, it doesn't go all the way to the top. And I just mounted it, just drilled a couple of screws into the side. Um, that does a couple of things. It keeps the, the cage from collapsing on itself. Uh, because there's really not much in the middle, so it keeps it spread apart, keeps it from going too wide or too narrow, so it kind of keeps it even, even if that makes sense. And then it's just a, a doorway here for them to get in and out. I'm not going to, if I find that this starts warping or causing problems, I'll come back and I'll put a piece of wood across here to brace it. But it's just three screws on this side, three screws on this side to hold it to the cage, and then the, the cage itself squeezing together kind of holds it. Hopefully that makes sense. And really, that's about all I've done. Now I'm ready to go ahead and start putting some hardware cloth on this, and I'm going to start at the end over there, and I'm just going to wrap it all the way around. All right, moment of truth here. We're going to see if my measurements were right. I should be able to just lay this on here and roll it across as I go. And I think it's going to work. This would definitely be easier with two people. 
oh yeah it's gonna work just fine I need to get some uh, cutters though and snip off these sharp ends here real quick so let me get that done um, no sense you need to watch this necessarily I'm just gonna lay this down staple it here roll it on down and staple it as I go put a staple probably every uh, couple of inches every inch inch and a half something like that so it stays sturdy especially on the bottom I'll put more staples on the top I don't need to worry about it as much there's nothing pushing up to uh, pull the staples out so every couple inches on the top every probably inch on the bottom hopefully that makes sense and uh, I got to go get like I said this taken care of before I start on that so I'll be back with you momentarily all right, so I got the hardware cloth all on it, and if you're wondering if it looks different, it does. I, got, I tipped it upside down because I got to put this board on here, and I can't hold it up and you know screw it in there at the same time. So that's why I've tipped it upside down. Let me bring you in a little bit closer, and you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. All right, so again, we're looking at the bottom of the cage right here. This is the section that's going to be closed in, and um, you know, again, I flipped it over because holding the board up here and trying to screw it in is crazy. But a couple things I wanted to note here: I went ahead and put hardware cloth over the whole bottom section here even though there's going to be a piece of plywood over this. I did that because if it gets too filthy and I need to uh, you know, drop that board out to clean it or something like that, I can do that without having to worry about the whole cage being falling apart. You know, the, the quail will still be able to be in here with me doing that. Hopefully that makes sense. So I just left um, you know, the hardware cloth all the way around the whole cage. Um, I put a lot more staples in it than I had initially expected to, but I figured more is better. Um, I did have to get a hammer in and kind of nail down a few of these. It didn't go in all the way, but I think it's on there. It's pretty sturdy. So let me get my board here. All right. So this is the board. Get it situated just right. That's going to fit right here. And I just need to get it situated, drill a couple holes, and screw it down. That looks about right. Where's my drill? All right, so I'm using one and a quarter inch screws for this. Get the corners first. I'm not really measuring any of these. I'm just kind of putting them in wherever it looks like there may be a gap in the wood so I can kind of seal it up a little bit and that's, that's really about all I'm doing. All right, I think that's it. Let me flip it back over. All righty, let's see what we look like inside. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I think that's gonna work really well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some uh, sand in this side of the, the hutch here. Let me bring you in a little bit closer. You can see kind of maybe what I'm talking about. All right, so there we go. So I'm just going to put some sand in here, just a, just a couple of inches of sand. Um, hopefully this 2x4 right here, you know, over here is enough to uh, keep them from kicking it all out. I'm going to have to come back and uh, raise these walls up a little bit higher, give them a ramp or something to get in and out of. I don't know yet. We'll see how that, act, how that looks, but I'm hoping this... It's a big enough space with a high enough wall here that it's going to be able to keep the sand in here. So I'll just fill this up with, you know, a couple inches of sand, and then to clean it out, just come through with a, a like a kitty litter scooper kind of thing, and then uh, scoop it out and clean it out uh, periodically. I may end up having to put a couple of staples in this hardware cloth to keep it down against the wood. So it, I don't know yet. We'll just have to see how it um, looks whenever I get the sand in there. Um, but other than that, it looks pretty good, I think. So now it's on to uh, putting some rafters on. All right, so uh, for my rafters, I'm gonna have to put another couple of uprights, one on each side probably, because uh, my sheet metal, this is too wide for my sheet metal to go across. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and build you know, two more, one here, one in the back, and one on the other side, one in the back, and then put my rafters across. And the rafters will be, I don't have them cut yet, but. And I don't know if I have enough paint, so I probably will not paint the rafters themselves. This is not the rafter, but you're going to get the idea of it. They're just going to mount like so um, on there. And that'll be where I mount my sheet metal for the roof. So we'll, uh, let me get these cut, get these things painted, and uh, I'm just going to mount them like right here uh, with a couple of screws. Um, but i got to measure them, cut them, and get them painted first. So let me get that done, and then we'll come back and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. 
All right, so almost finished with this hutch build, um, down to putting the rafters on. I've already got two of them mounted, um, but now I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, plastic. I've just got a piece of uh, six mil clear plastic is all that is. It's just plastic sheeting. I had a leftover from a garden project. And I'm gonna put that over this side right here. So that will give a little bit of extra protection from rain and things like that, but yet it'll let light through. So that's why I'm gonna use this here real quick. And um, this piece is, I mean, I didn't cut it. I didn't pre-cut it to size. So I'm just gonna kinda staple it down and then cut off the extra. So that's what we're gonna do next. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I've got way more than I need here, but I didn't pre-cut it. Like I said, I'm gonna just staple it down, cut off the excess. So I'm gonna just start here on one corner, make sure I've got more than enough because uh, that way I don't run out. Okay, and then I'm just gonna work my way across and then work my way down and we'll go from there. So keep it tight as I go. A bit of staple every, um, oh, I don't know, a couple inches. It doesn't need a whole lot. It just needs to be held down. All right, so I got most of the rafters on. I got the piece of plastic on here. Um, let me show you how I'm mounting the rafters real quick. Pull you around the other side. It'll be a little bit easier to see. All right, hopefully this shows up okay on camera. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a line right here, six inches in. So that gives me about a six inch overhang in the front and two or three inches in the back. It doesn't need as much because it's you know sloping in the back. So um, I'm going to turn this this way so I can see the line on this side, if that makes sense. Set it up there, line out. Uh, up, that line goes right there with the edge of that, and make sure it is flush at the top, right here at the front corner, because that's going to drop down in the back, so hopefully that makes sense. So it's flush there in the front with that lined up, and it's just sitting right now on top of the back, um, the back uh, uh, stud, there we go. <laughs> so I'm just going to put one screw in it right here. And I don't need to pre-drill this, uh, and this should work just fine. I think it will drill to work right. Now you may notice, I don't know if you can see this or not, but that board pulled away from the, the stud whenever I put it in there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just back this screw back out until it rides flush, there we go, and then drive it back in. And there, now it's flush, no problem. That's a common thing that happens when you don't pre-drill your holes, no big deal. Now I'm gonna go around to the back side. And hopefully you can still see me on film back here. And just lower that down, get it flush with the uh, stud at the top, make sure that it's not sticking up above it anywhere. And put a screw in it right there. I'm using three inch decking screws for this. And same thing, that one pulled away from the board, so. Oops. I'm gonna get my drill working right. Pull away and then drive it back in. Oh, if I can get my drill to work right here. There we go. Yeah, that's good to go. Now I'll go back through and just put one more screw in each one. And that should be plenty to hold it in place. All right, one more thing I've got to do. I've got these uh, one by two uh, furring strips and those are gonna go across the top because these are just a little bit wide, just barely narrow enough for my sheet metal to go across. So I'm gonna give them a little bit extra something. I'm gonna cut these to length and then they're just gonna mount right on top like this and that'll give something else for that sheet metal to sit against and to hold on. I'm gonna put three of them on, one here, one in the back and one right down the middle. So I'm gonna get those cut and get those mounted and uh, the special I'm going to do that and just uh, cut them to length. So I'm going to screw them down to those, uh, those rafters. And then I'll be back and we'll, uh, we'll show the next step. We're just almost finished here. All right, I'm ready to uh, put the, uh, the actual roof on here, the finishing touches here. What I'm using is some sheet metal. Um, this, this is just scrap sheet metal it was left over from, I don't know where I got it. I got it off Craigslist somewhere. Somebody was giving it away for free and I've had it for a long time, but it works just fine for this roof. So, um, it's pretty easy the way this goes on. Really should probably be wearing gloves while I handle this stuff. Be very careful. It's sharp and can definitely cut you, but I'm just going to situate it here. Just get it kind of straightened up. It doesn't need to really overhang any in the front and get it situated on the uh, edges here, best I can. And then I'm gonna be putting it in with, uh, let me grab the lid so I can show you what they are. So what I'm using are these, uh, what are they, three quarter inch? Yeah, three quarter inch uh, sheet metal screws. They have a washer on, let me grab one, I'll show you what they look like. 
and uh, there they are. They have a washer on them that uh, is supposed to seal up. I mean, I don't really care about a sealing because, you know, this is a quail hutch. It's not, you know, it doesn't matter if a little bit of water leaks through and it's got holes in the metal anyway, but these work really well to hold that sheet metal down. Um, they're self-drilling, don't have to pre-drill any holes, so really not much to it. Just going to get up here and uh, start putting them in. And I don't need a whole lot. Um, what I need is, make sure I'm on the wood first of all, I just need probably three of them all the way down. There's one. I'll put another one right here. And then another one in the back. And that's it, that'll hold that down. And I'll put, uh, let's see, probably another one right here, about halfway across, set the other piece of sheet metal over here, drill through both of those. So I need about three, three across here, if that makes sense. When you put these on there, get out here where I can see the camera, <laughs> hopefully you can see me through here. When you put these on there, there is a way, I mean, you just gotta kind of fin uh, finesse them just a little bit, they'll, they'll ride together pretty well, if that makes sense. You'll get one, um, you know, the, the loop from one and the other one just cups right over the top of it. So hopefully you kind of understand what I'm saying there. Make sure this is where I need it. I think it is. This is scrap and it's a little beat up so it doesn't sit just perfect, but it's, it's good enough. All right, here we are with it all set up and with birds in it. I've got, uh, this is going to be primarily a grow out pen. So I've got some grow outs in here. They're about, uh, I don't know, six, seven weeks old, somewhere right around in there. You can kind of see, hopefully you can see them. Um, about half of them hanging out over here. The rest of them took right to the sandboxes just as soon as I put them in there. Let me take you over to that side. We'll show you what that looks like with some sand in it. All right, so here we go. And you see uh, these birds really liking that sandbox. Let me bring the camera in just a little bit closer. And you can see that seems to be working pretty well. We'll see if that holds sand for very long, if they end up kicking it all out or not. But uh, for the most part, it seems to be working pretty well. They're in there just dust bathing away, just having a good old time. And uh, there's a little bit of sand that's falling out, but not that much so far. So hopefully it uh, holds up pretty well. We'll see. Well, I hope you got something out of this video. If you're looking at building your own quail hutch, maybe you picked up a tip or two. Uh, let me know if you built your own, if you made a modification to it, if you did something different. Always looking for improvements and other ideas as well. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, God bless.